Hi, Mr. Richards here. Today's lesson is on volume of cones. Let's take a look at what you'll learn. First, how to find the volume of a cone. And second, how to use the volume of a cone to solve real-world problems. And speaking of real-world problems, let's take a look at our real-world link. At the carnival, Grace and Ellie are making snow cones for the school carnival. They want to know how much ice goes into a paper cone that has a radius of 1 and 5 tenths inches and a height of 4 inches. Recall the formula for finding the volume of a rectangular pyramid is volume equals one-third the area of the base times the height of the pyramid. How does the volume of a pyramid compare to the volume of a prism with the same height and base. Well, this one-third gives it away. Remember, the volume of the prism was volume equals area of the base times the height. And here we have this one-third. So we can say now the volume of the pyramid is one-third the size of the prism. Next, what is the formula for finding the volume of a cylinder? Well, if the volume of any kind of prism, including a cylinder, is volume equals the area of the base times the height, then the area of the base for a cylinder, well, that's a circle. So we can say volume is going to equal pi times radius squared. That's our circle base then times the height. What is the volume of a cylinder with a radius of 1 and 5 tenths inches and a height of 4 inches? Use 3.14 for pi. Well, if we use our formula, volume equals the area of the base times the height. So volume equals pi r squared times the height. We're going to use 3.14 for pi times our radius, which is 1 and 5 tenths squared, times the height of 4. We'll take our 1 and 5 tenths, square it, then multiply it by 3.14 and 4, and we come up with a solution of 28 and 26 hundredths inches, and in volume, our unit's going to be cubed. As we continue on to 4 and 5, the volume of the cones Grace and Ellie are using is, or is about 9 and 42 hundredths cubic inches. Write a ratio in simplest form, comparing the volume of the cone to the volume of the cylinder. Well, if we put 9.5, Four, two, over 28.26. If I take and divide by 9.42 and or 9 and 42 hundredths on both the top and the bottom, I actually get one third. So what is the formula? for the volume of a cone? Well, volume equals that one-third times pi r squared h. So it's one-third the volume of the cylinder. 
And so our key concept, volume of a cone, the volume V of a cone with radius R is one-third the area of the base, B, times the height, H, which is what we just discovered. So one-third times the area of the base times the height, or pi R squared will get us the area of the base, and so we can use that as well. A cone is a three-dimensional figure with one circular base connected by a curved surface to a single vertex. In our first guided example, find the volume of a cone round to the nearest tenth. Well, our radius here is 3, and our height is 6. Setting up our formula, volume equals 1 third pi r squared h. We substitute in 3 for the radius, 6 for the height. And so, just a little intermediate step here. Just make sure, as you're solving this, that you square that 3 first before you multiply any of these numbers together. It's just a good habit to get in. I don't want you to accidentally multiply something with the radius before you square it. Either way, the answer here is 56 and 5 tenths cubic inches. In example A, now we're asked to find the volume of each cone and round to the nearest tenth. So in A, we'll start up here in the top of our work zone. If we start off with the formula we need, volume equals one third pi r squared h. Our volume is going to equal one third. We'll use 3.14 for pi again. Times our radius here is two squared times a height of seven. So our volume is going to equal one third times 3.14 times 4 times 7. And when you multiply these numbers together, you end up with 29.306, and that 6 is repeating. And so if I'm looking to round now my answer to the nearest tenth, that 0 is not going to round the 3 up, so the volume is simply going to equal 29 and 3 tenths. And if I write my answer in for A, 29 and 3 tenths feet cubed. Now what about example B? We're given a cone on its side with a diameter of 24 millimeters and a height of 26 millimeters. So if we once again start off by writing our formula, volume equals one-third times pi times my radius squared times the height. And one of the great reasons for writing down the formula besides learning it is that we need to put in our radius here. Well, the diameter is 24. So the radius here is going to be half of that, so 12. So now volume is going to equal one-third, we'll use 3.14 for pi again, times, make sure you put in 12 for that radius, squared, times your height of 26. So volume is going to equal one-third times 3.14, 12 squared is 144, times 26. So volume is going to equal, when I multiply these together, 3,918 and 72 hundredths. And if I'm looking to round this now to the nearest tenth, we'll look at the tenths place. Look the spot to the right, it's not going to round it up. So volume is going to be 3,918 and 7 tenths. And with my unit, that is going to be millimeters cubed. Moving on to guided example two. A cone-shaped paper cup is filled with water. The height of the cup is 10 centimeters and the diameter is 8 centimeters. What is the volume of the paper cup round to the nearest tenth? 
Well, the height is 10, so that's what goes in for our height. The diameter is 8, so we need to take that diameter and divide it by 2 to get a radius of 4. When you solve that equation, your volume is about equal to 167 and 6 tenths cubic centimeters. Again, centimeters cubed, written that way, is the same thing as cubic centimeters. April is filling six identical cones for her pinata. Each cone has a radius of one and five tenths inches and a height of nine inches. What is the total volume of the cones round to the nearest tenth? Well, let's start off with our formula once again. Volume equals one-third pi r squared times the height. So volume is going to equal one-third, and we'll once again use 3.14 for pi. Our radius is one and five-tenths. We're going to square that and multiply by the height of nine. So volume is going to equal one-third times 3.14 times 1.5 squared is 2.25 times that height of 9. And when I multiply these numbers together, my result is 21.195 or 21 and 195 thousandths inches cubed. Now, there are six of these cones six identical cones. So we need to multiply this result by six to get the total volume of all the cones. And once I do that, my volume is actually going to equal 127 and 17 hundredths. And when I look to round to the nearest tenth, my volume is going to equal 127 and 2 tenths. And so if I put in my answer for C, 127 and 2 tenths inches cubed. Now as we move on to volume of composite solids, when a composite solid includes cylinders and cones, you can find the volume by decomposing it into solids whose volumes you know how to find. So our guided example three, find the volume of the solid round to the nearest tenth. Step one, find the volume of the cylinder up top. Well, we had a diameter of eight, which means we have a radius of four. So four goes in for a radius. We have a height of four. So four squared times four times pi is about 201 tenth. Then as we go to find the volume of the cone, we can use this diameter of 8, because this space on the cylinder is the same size as this space on the cylinder, which is the same size as the base on the cone. So this diameter is also 8, which means the radius is 4. And you can see the radius is 4 right there. The height was 5. 4 squared was 16 times 5 times pi times 1 third was 83 and 8 tenths. And now, once you found the volume of the cylinder and the volume of the cone, the total volume of this total object is 284 and 9 tenths cubic feet after you add the two volumes together. In our example, find the volume of the solid. And I'm guessing we'll round to the nearest tenth at the end. Well, what do we have? We have two figures. It looks to me like we have a cone here as it comes to a point and a cone here as it comes to a point. So a guided example was a cylinder and a cone. Our example are, well, two cones. And we'll add the volumes together at the end. So I'm just going to identify this cone as cone A and this cone as cone B. And so as I look to find the volume of cone A, our volume is going to equal for the cone one-third times pi 
times the radius squared times the height. Well, looking at that, our radius is nicely identified as 6, and our height is 5 and 5 tenths. So volume is going to equal 1 third times 3.14, we'll use for pi, times the radius of 6 squared times the height of 5 and 5 tenths. Uh, 1 third times 3.14. 6 squared is 36 times 5 and 5 tenths. And when I multiply those numbers together, the result is 207 and 24 hundredths inches cubed. Now I'm not going to round here yet. Let's find the volume of cylinder B now or not cylinder B, but cone B. Volume is once again going to equal one-third pi radius squared height. And in this lesson alone, we've written this down about five times already. And the more you write this down, the quicker you'll be able to remember it long term. So volume is going to be one-third times 3.14 the radius is the same radius as the previous cone, so that's 6 squared times the height of 13. So volume equals 1 third times 3.14 times 36 times 13. And when I multiply these together, my result is 489 and 84 hundredths inches cubed. And my total volume of the solid is going to be A plus B here. So the 207 and 24 hundredths plus 489 and 84 hundredths is going to have a result of 600. 97 and 8 hundredths inches cubed. And just since most of our other examples had us rounding to the nearest tenth, we'll do that on this last one as well. The zero in the tenths place will round up to a one because the eight's larger than five. So my final answer for my final example of this lesson is 697 one tenth inches cubed. And that is it for this lesson on volumes of cones. Good luck.